at Burton's Media Group, we are actively developing textbooks and games using Amazon Lumberyard. The primary 3D modeling tool and texturing tool that we're using is Blender and GIMP. Of course, Lumberyard works great with the Autodesk tool set such as Maya and 3ds Max, but we decided to go with open source tools such as Blender and GIMP. This tutorial is going to cover how to export from Blender to Lumberyard using the FBX Preview Importer from Lumberyard. The first thing that we need to do is prepare Blender. The most important step is making sure that our units are consistent between Lumberyard and Blender. That means setting our units to metric instead of the default Blender unit. Uh, that's easily accomplished, so let's start with that. So here we are in Blender. I've got my model open, which is the model used in our first textbook on Blender on how to make a simple space game. The first thing that we need to do is, as I mentioned, go ahead and set our units to metric. You can do that by going to the Scene tab, go to Units, and as the default for Blender is None, you need to change that to Metric. Once that is changed to metric, each square inside of Blender will be set to metric, or each square is equal to one meter. You can go ahead and change the unit scale. Um, I can already tell my ship is going to be a little bit small, with it being approximately two meters by two meters, so we, we will need to change the unit scale. However, that can be done in a variety of locations during the export and import process, so I'm not going to worry about it right here in, in my scene settings. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and work on exporting this. Now, one of the things that you need to be conscious of when working with any game development is the organization of your assets. Assets, in most games, you may have hundreds or even thousands or tens of thousands of assets involved in your game development, so it's very important that you have everything organized in a logical fashion. To that end, I'm going to go to my hard drive and go to Amazon Lumberyard. I am currently working with version 1.6 and I'll go to the dev folder under Lumberyard and I've already created my space game in Lumberyard and I'm going to create a folder and call it objects. You might also call it entities or whatever works for you, um, assets. The, the important thing is to have everything organized in a logical system. In Lumberyard, you are only able to import objects that are currently stored underneath the game folder. And by default, the game folder is located underneath the dev folder in the current installation of the Lumberyard system. So I'm going to go to objects, and I'll go ahead and also create a folder for the ship. In the very near future, I'm also going to be importing the asteroids that are going to be used in the game. So I'll go ahead and create the asteroids folder as well, just to save some time for later. Okay, so I've got my directory set. The next thing we need to do is prepare our scene for export. Now, up here in the top right-hand corner, I've got the scene, and it's showing the render layers. I've got the... already have the texture set correctly. It is a good idea for your textures to either have them located in your game directory already or I'll show you a shortcut for being able to copy them to the same folder as your Blender FBX file as well. But we do have some extra things in here that we don't want to be exported such as the camera. So I'm going to right click on the camera and delete it as well as the lamp. Lighting will be supplied by the game engine so I don't need it inside the the model. That leaves me with the render level layer, the world, and the circle, which is all that's really needed to be to make the export and import work correctly. Including the lamp and the camera in your export will cause errors when you go to import it into the lumber yard game engine. That's something that I played with for quite a while before I figured out the trick for removing the, the lamp and the camera from the view. Once those are removed, everything imports very smoothly. So now that we've got those removed from the scene, let's go to File. And you don't have to save, just simply remove them for your export. So I'm going to go to File and go to Export, and we'll select FBX. And we need to change to the folder 
that we're going to be storing everything in. So I'm going to change to my Amazon Lumberyard. I'm currently on version 1.6. Dev, Space Game, Objects, and Ship. Yep, that's pretty long, but we're there. I'm going to shorten my spaceship's file name. Then we need to go ahead and make sure everything's set. Again, you can go ahead and scale the game up at this point. You can also set your forward and up. In Lumberyard, Z is up and X or negative X can be forward. Uh, you can always rotate the ship once you get into the game. And last, we need to make sure that our, well not last, second to last, we need to make sure that only the mesh is going to be exported. We don't want it trying to export the lamp or other objects as part of it, just the mesh for our export. And let's go ahead and do a set the path to match. This will force the materials to be copied over with the ship to the correct folder so that they can be imported correctly. Um, that can be a real issue when you're importing into a 3D model. So make sure that you do import the mesh and have your texture path set to match. We want it going to the same folder. Do make sure as well that your directory structure does not include any spaces. Spaces can throw errors when you're trying to import into the Lumberyard game engine. So following the traditional old DOS style of creating directories and folders, don't use spaces in any of your naming conventions. We've now got that set, so we can go ahead and click the export button. You don't have to save what you've done, we've just simply exported, but do remember that if you did, did make changes to the object for the export that your 3D modeler or texture artist doesn't isn't aware of, that uh, you make those same changes again in the future if you need to export. And if we go to the file folder now, You'll see our ship there. Um, I don't see my texture. It doesn't look like it copied over correctly, so let's make sure that the texture, which I happen to have here on my desktop, is also in the folder, just to make sure that we don't have any problems with the texture importing. Now that we have all of that set, we can move over to Lumberyard. I've already opened my scene, And I don't, and I've already created a level in the scene. I'm not using, since this is going to be a space based game, I'm not going to be using any of the uh, terrain. So I went ahead and turned off the terrain when I was creating it. In a few minutes, I'll turn off the ocean, but we'll leave that running for just the time being. So we're going to go to View and Open View Pane and go down to the FBX importer. Now this is still in preview, but it has become very stable over the last several versions. Um, I've been using the FBX importer since version 1.3 and it just keeps getting better and better. So I'm going to go to import, click on the small folder icon in the top right hand corner, and you can it will automatically open to your game directory. As I said, I'm storing everything underneath objects, so I'll go to the ship, select my FBX file, click open. As you can see, it does open it up there. We can add rules then for origin if we need to rotate it or scale it up. As I said, I know I'm going to need to scale this up, so I'm going to, I know it needs to be scaled up. I'm going to just start with a scale of 10. Let's add material so that our textures come across. And if you want to, you can also go ahead and add physics proxy or advanced materials anything that you need to go ahead and get set up for collisions and handling physics inside of your game. If you're concerned about your mesh coming across, you can look at the mesh for the import and see what's going to import there. As you can see, I've just got the circle, that's great. And that's just by clicking on the small icon to the right that allows you to select the meshes that will be imported. That's in case the your 3D modeler accidentally exported the camera or exported the, um, the lamp. We don't want those importing, so you can go ahead and turn those off through this point as well. Okay, so we'll click on import. Because it did not have any asset info created or material information already created, it is going to throw an initial error, but then you can see that it did have a success where it created the material file and the CGF file. CGFs 
is the Cry graphics format used by the Cry Engine, which of course the Lumberyard game engine was originally based upon. Um, after talking to the people at Amazon Lumberyard, the actual percentage of the Cry Engine that is still in Lumberyard is about 20%. So it's, but this is still one of the parts that's in there is the Cry graphics format for storing of meshes. So we'll click on OK. And we've now got that imported. If we're ready to go ahead and import it into the view, you can go to File, or I'm sorry, to View, Open View Pane, and down to the File Browser. And go to our Objects and our Ship. There's the Space Raptor version 4 CGF file. And we can now drag that into our game environment. Dragging it in, um, it does appear that my textures did not come across correctly. You can edit the material files. They are a standard text file, uh, actually XML storage format. So you can open and change that. You can also change your textures through the asset viewer or the material viewer, material editor. Be able to go in and make sure that your objects, yeah, see it did not find the texture correctly. You can add the textures then through the system and be able to apply the textures. So here's my material. As you can see, it did not find it. So let's edit the material file and make sure that this is showing up. Obviously, this is looking for it in the wrong place. If um, So let's take a look at the material file. So we'll open the folder and go to our ship location. Uh, there's my material file and I'm going to open it. I use Sublime Text for most of my editing and yes it's still point, pointing to the original desktop so apparently Blender did not do an actual match for the texture but we can simply edit that and get it to the right location. Texture file is in the same folder. We should be fine and we'll save. So let's get this pointing to the correct texture inside the environment and we'll go to our objects the ship and here's our file our JPEG that has been converted into the correct format inside the environment and we'll open that and do that for both of these and open there we go and now our ship has the texture material applied to it of course this is a very simple one we've got a more complex material coming in the very near future but this will this is a good placeholder inside of our environment. So that's how we import models that were created in Blender into Lumberyard and be able to apply those materials afterwards. Do make sure that materials are pointing to the correct location inside the environment and have fun making your Lumberyard games. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group, or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button.